Alright, uh, today I'm going to teach you how to get the Universal Remote on the PSP for the new custom firmware 5.00. Um, the basic problem is is the, the new custom firmware doesn't have the 1.5 kernel in it already, so you have to go to Dark Alex's website to download the 1.5 kernel. So here, you just go to uh, darkalex.org, I'll put it in the description. And you go down and uh, you you download either Mirror 1 or Mirror 2, and then you download the 1.5 eBoot. And this is just the 1.5 kernel for the 5.0. So once you download those, um, let's see, I have it right there the 1.5 eBoot and then the 1.5 add on right there. And you just extract it just like you would. Um, like you know how to do it and then uh, you have you extract it and then uh, what you do you go into USB mode uh, USB connection alright and then uh, go up here and then alright so you go into uh, it gives you the uh, the directions in the text. It says the README text right there. It says just copy to PSP game 5xx. So um, you extract this. You only need this folder right there, and you extract that. So I'll just bring that to my desktop right here. All right. So go into there. You go into PSP game 5xx, and then what you'll do is you'll take that. Uh, that folder right there, the one that you extracted, the only one you need, and then you extract it, and then you put it into the game 5xx, and then you go into the root of your PSP, and you put this 150.pvp in the root, and then that'll get you the 1.5 kernel for the new custom firmware. So once you do that, or let's see, uh, you you download, go over here, and you. You download the uh, Universal Remote. I'll put it again in the description. You download it over here. And then uh, you get it, and it's right there, I think. Yeah. And then you extract that. And then you get these two folders right there. So you go back into your PSP. And then you put the Remotes folder. You just put that in the root. So you drag that over to the root. Uh, the root, as you see, I already have it right there. Remotes. And then you go into PSP game and then you take you open up your PSP on your desktop game and then you do these two folders right there, the UR and the UR one percent and you put that into the game folder. And once you have that you've done everything on the computer that you need to do. So now you go over to your PSP and turn it off. Okay, um, to get into the recovery mode, hold down R, and then you power up, and I think you need to hold it. Sometimes it doesn't work, but, uh, you just need, sometimes it takes a few tries, but you just hold down R, hold down power up, and it's not being difficult right now. Alright, let's try this one out. Just, like, count to five or something, I don't know. And then power up. Oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. Alright, here we go. One more time. Alright. Alright, let me try this. R. Power up. There we go. Alright. Then you go into configuration. And you go down to... Um, game folder homebrew. And it and then it should say currently 1.50 kernel. You want it to say that, and if it says that you're doing good. And before it it would say that, and it was not telling the truth because the new custom firmware didn't have the 1.50 kernel. But since you just put it on your PSP, now the 1.50 kernel works. So you press back, and then you go to back again. And now since you got that 1.50 kernel, it sh should work.
and then you go over to you do need custom firmware by the way if I haven't already mentioned that <laughs> 5.0 this is for 5.0 because I spent like three hours looking how to do it for 5.0 custom firmware and then I figured out that the new custom firmware didn't have the 1.5 kernel so that's why it wasn't working but yeah you open up you go to game and then infrared remote and it should work alright so you press square and you find now this doesn't work with the TV that I have in my room but it does work with the TV that I had downstairs and my parents aren't on it I'll show you if it works so let's see here but you, you just press square yeah they're on it you press square and then you toggle down to the TV that you have now this doesn't work with all TVs because it doesn't work with mine but see like we have a cable box called Scientific Atlanta and that's what it worked with so you just scroll down and there it is Scientific Atlanta right there press X X and then it'll, it gave me two options we use the uh, I don't know one of these you pick whichever one that yours works with then you press O there's all your functions sorry I can't show you it works but it works for some TVs so that's basically how you do it you can also do since you get the 1.5 kernel add-on you can also do the um, the IR whatever it's called it's called the uh, I don't really pay attention whatever it's called uh, there you go IR shell 3.9 you, I'll give you the, the the link for this one too, but you download it, and then you just follow the instructions. I think it gives you a README or something like that, and then you follow those directions, and then I don't even know what you can do with the IR shell, but it wouldn't work before you get the 1.5 kernel. So the basic gist of this video is, if you read this, the new 5.0 custom firmware does not come with the 5.0 kernel, so you have to get the 5.0 kernel add-on for it. And that's what you're doing right here. And you need to download, again, either Mirror 1 or Mirror 2 and this 1.5 eBoot. So with the 1.5 kernel, that means you can, since these developers develop these programs that only work with certain custom firmwares, all of them really work with 1.5 kernel. So if you just turn on that 1.5 kernel in the, what's it called, the, sh the R shift thing, uh, recovery mode, there you go. Everything should work fine. So that's how you do it uh, with for 5.0 custom firmware. All right.